Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. All right, family, this is our weekly Sunday devotional. Today, we will be talking about slow down. Hallelujah. Slow down. Amen. That's our topic for today. Today is Sunday, February the 25th, and our topic is slow down. And our devotion that we are using for this year is God is Faithful, my devotional. All right. You can still find these um, pretty cheap. Um, but I think they're out of print, but you can still find them pretty cheap, okay? If you want to follow along and get your own or you don't need it at all, just grab you a Bible, um, a pen, and some highlighters, all right? That's what you want to do so you can take you some notes. But with that being said, I'm going to reveal the Bible right after we get into prayer on what Bible we're going to use for today. So let's go ahead and pray in, and then we're going to get started. Hallelujah. Father God, we glorify you, we magnify you, we lift you up, we exalt your name on today, Father God, for this is the day that you have made and we will be glad and rejoice in it. We ask right now, Father God, for forgiveness for all of our sins, known and unknown. We ask for our heart to be opened up to receive this word, Lord God, so that we are not just hearers only, but doers also. We ask right now, Lord God, for our spiritual eyes to be open so that we can see, for our spiritual ears to be open so that we may hear. We ask for anything that is separating us from you, Lord God, to be purged out of our hearts right now, Father God. We also ask right now, Lord God, for you to descend upon us, your divine spirit of wisdom, your spirit of knowledge, your spirit spirit of clarity, your spirit of understanding, your spirit of revelation, and your spirit of discernment. Father God, as we decrease, may you increase. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Have your way and teach us today in the mighty and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Are you ready, family? Are you ready? Woo, I'm excited. I hope you guys are having a blessed, blessed Sunday. Hope you celebrated the Shabbat on yesterday. So let's get into it, family. All right. So today we are talking about slow down, right? And the Bible that we're going to be using today, drum roll. The Bible that we're going to be using today is, let me pull you up, the New King James Apply the Word Study Bible. All right. And if we have time, we may even use the Fire Bible for notes as well. But today we're going to be focusing in the New King James Apply the Word Study Bible. That is our Bible for this week. All right. So with that being said, we want to go ahead and turn to our foundational text, which is found right here in James. And we I did a whole series on James. It's a um it's a link. I don't even know what is in the playlist somewhere, but we did the whole book of James already. So this is basically going to be kind of like review, but it's pertaining to this devotion dealing with slow down. So our foundational text is James chapter one, verses 19 through 20. And I'm just going to read it here. And then we're going to go ahead and read it, the full chapter one in the Apply the Word Bible. So our foundational text reads, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Mm, mm, mm. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive the meekness, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Come on. I just said that in the prayer. That's my prayer every single time. My Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, family. So go ahead and grab your Bible if you haven't already. Pause the video and go great. Go get your Bible. Don't just look at me. I need you to participate. Okay. I need you to participate. So let's go ahead and turn to James chapter one. 
So let me move this on over. James chapter one. Let me get let me get situated. Uh, my little my little seat. Whew. Okay, glory be to God. I'm excited. Okay, every time I come to the word of God, I get excited. <sighs> All right, so James chapter one, family. So let's pull you on down so you can see. Make sure we in this word. Make sure you're not too crooked. Is it the book or the camera? Okay, that's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. So we're going to be focusing on James chapter 1. So let's go ahead and read it. And then we're going to come back and read through all the little notes that it has. Or I call them little sidebars. We have this one right here. You can't rush it. And then we have over here. Um, this is still dealing with chapter 1. The root of sin. And then there's some other stuff in here I wanted to read that it tell us to go to. So let's go ahead and get started so we can have some time. All right. So let's go. Let's get it. Okay, so we're just going to read um, word for word, precept upon precept, line upon line, all right? And I'm just going to give my commentary as we go, like I've never read this before, and I'm just going to commentate, all right? So let's go. Greetings to the 12 tribes. So that's what this little section is. This is just a greeting. And it says, James, and a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings so that was the introduction or the greetings to the 12 tribes so let's get it profiting from trials wow okay so this section is going to be talking about profiting from trials okay it says my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials Come on, family. We're we going to take our time today. Yes, we are. We're going to take our time today. What is this telling us? My brethren, right? James is telling, talking to the brothers and sisters in Christ. He said to do what? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So when things are coming up against you, we should do what? According to the scripture. Count it all joy. Put that in the comments. That's our first one. Yep. I don't know how many we're going to have, but that one right there, because it's application, we need to know this. When the trial, it didn't say murmur and complain, right? It did not say murmur and complain. It said, count it all joy. That's what I'm reading. What's your Bible say? What's your Bible say? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. When challenges come, situations come crisis come we don't panic we don't stress we don't get anxiety we don't fear we what counted all joy period that's what it says that's what it says we need to put this into practice all right we need to put this into practice next scripture i mean the next verse it says knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience Ooh, come on, we're going to take our time today. Knowing that the testing, come on, family, of your faith, uh-huh, do what? Produces patience. Come on. So when a trial is coming, it's going to produce patience. It's going to produce patience. Mm, mm, mm. I'm loving it already. I'm loving it already. I'm loving it already. Let's just, let's just read. That's all we're doing. We're just reading. Knowing that the testing family, that trial, right? That crisis, knowing that the testing of your faith, what are you going to do when that, when that various trials come? You're going to murmur and complain. You're going to stress out. You're going to start talking doubt, unbelief, negative talk. No, it says what? First of all, count it all joy. So when this test, this test is coming upon you, why? Because it's going to produce patience. God is doing a work in us, right? It's going to produce patience from what I'm reading. Let's read it again, just in case you just stepped away. Let's read, let's read it again. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing uh -huh, of your faith uh -huh, produces patience. Glory be to God. But let patience have its perfect work. Mm, mm, mm. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. Okay, that's pretty clear. 
But let patience, family, have its perfect work. All right, let's go. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Come on, God is trying to do a work in us, right? He's trying to do a work in us. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Come on. I'm just highlight all that. I'm just going to highlight it all, family. I want to highlight first because it's, it's getting kind of smeary. And I want to highlight. got to remember to highlight first, underline second. One more time. That you may be perfect and complete. Lacking what? No thing. No thing. That you will be lacking nothing. All right? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Come on. Come on. Mm, 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 mm. Here it is. We're just going to just keep highlighting. <laughs> We're just going to keep highlighting. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. If any of you lack wisdom, so if you are lacking wisdom in the situation, what? Let him ask of God, Lord, give me wisdom on this situation. Lord, give me wisdom with these children. Lord, give me wisdom in this marriage. Lord, give me wisdom on this job of leadership. Lord, give me wisdom with how to pray. Give me wisdom on how to study your word. Give me wisdom on how to deal with whatever situation that you are, that's coming against you, that you need to be counting it all joy. That's what you need to be seeking, right? First, you need to count it all joy, all right? Because we know that this is what's going to produce patience, right? It's going to be, it's going to, um, it's going to help us to be perfect and complete so that we lack nothing, all right? And then it says, if any of you lack wisdom, what do you do? Here's the application right here. Let him ask of God. So you need to ask God. Lord, give me wisdom on this situation. My finances is all messed up, Father God. Give me wisdom on how to pay these bills on time. I know you are my provider, so give me wisdom. Boom, and then you wait for it. Okay, then you wait for him to give you the wisdom on what you need to do. Don't just start shaking and moving. He said, acknowledge me in all your ways. That's everything, family. To what you eat, drink, wear, how you deal with in your marriage, on the job. He said, acknowledge him, right? Ask of him. Of what? For wisdom. You don't know what to do? Ask for wisdom. Scripture. Scripture right here. One more time. If any of you lack wisdom, comma, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Come on. Are you asking? Are you asking? Okay, this is still okay, this is still part of five. Let me just highlight this all orange. All this is good. All of it. My whole page gonna be highlighted up. Let's read them five again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all. God gives to all. I'm circling that. What liberally, meaning no limits, right? Freely and without reproach. Come on. And it will be, not, and it say might be, it says, and it will be, and it will be, circle that, and it will be what? Given to him. But guess what? You're going to have to open up your mouth and you're going to have to ask. You can't just say, God knows my heart. It didn't say, know it in your heart. It said, let him ask, right? So that's something you have to do, all right? You have to specifically ask for wisdom out of your mouth. You have to use your words, all right? And you can say, Lord, according to James 1 and 5, you said, if I need wisdom to ask you, so I'm asking you right now, Lord, for wisdom on this situation. Boom, now you just pray back scripture, right? You just pray back scripture back scripture. You said, Lord, you said, according to James, uh-huh, chapter one, verse five, that if I want wisdom to ask you, here it is. Now, now you go and ask. 
and you're giving him back his scripture. And it said, you said it will be given to me. Come on, family. That's how you pray. That's how you pray. Come on. Woo, love it. But let him ask in faith. See, now, now, this, now it's giving you more application. But let him ask in faith with no doubt. Listen, listen, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Okay, so if you're asking God for something, he said, first of all, you need to ask in faith. Stand on what I said. What is faith? Faith is believing and standing on what God said. That's all faith is, right? Believing and standing on what the word of God is telling you to do. That's what faith is. So this says, but let him ask in faith. Meaning I'm going to believe this word, Lord. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to believe it. There's your faith right there. Okay? Then it says, then it gives you more instruction with no doubting. So you can't doubt. So if you're asking, but you're doubting, you already canceled it. You already canceled it because you're not following instruction. You're not asking with faith. Faith said, do what I'm telling you to do. He said, do it with no doubting. So you have to get eliminate the doubt. Okay? This is how you work the word. You have to follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Let's read it. But let him ask in faith, meaning follow everything I'm telling you to do. Believe what I'm telling you to do with no doubting. Uh-huh. For he who doubts is going to tell you what happens if you doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind, meaning he can't get with it. You're not anchored down. You have to be standing on what he said and don't doubt it. Are you going to be tossed to and fro like a wave? Right? That's what it's saying. So if you doubt, don't expect nothing because you're not going to get it. It's, it's giving you clear instruction here, family. Clear instruction. And I said I was going to highlight and then underline and I'm still doing it backwards. No doubting. That's the first thing. And then it tells you, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. You can't doubt, fam. You can't. We got we got to get that doubt out of our hearts. Believe this word. Believe this word. Believe this word. Put that in the comments. Believe this word, okay? Believe this word. Put that in the comments. That's faith. Okay, let's move on. It says, "For let not that man who suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord." Listen, it's clear. If you bring doubt into it, don't expect nothing to happen. He's telling you right here. For let not that man, what man? The man who's doubting. The man who has doubt in his heart. You praying for something, but you have doubt. You, it's talking to you. If you doubt and you pray for something, oh yeah, well, I think he might. I maybe, okay, guess what? For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. You already canceled it, like I said. You already canceled it because the doubt is, is coming against what the word of God said. He said, oh, you don't believe me? Okay, well, you won't get it then. That's basically what it's saying. You reading it for yourself. I don't, I ain't got, hmm. you reading it. We're not making this up. We're going to pull these principles out. We're going to pull out these instructions and we're going to apply them today. Today, family. Woo, I'm loving it. Let's go. One more time. We got to read it again because just because we're going to start with six, but let him acts in faith mean, believe what I'm telling you with no doubting first instruction, right? For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for let not that man, what man, the man who's doubting suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Meaning you're not going to get nothing. If you got some doubt. You're not going to receive anything. You're not. Let for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Mm, 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 that's too good. Come on, here we go. He is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. Mm, 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 mm. That's what it say. I'm not making this up. Scripture is telling you, if you doubting, 
You are unstable in all your ways. Let's read it one more time. He is a double-minded man who is the one who doubts. Okay? And he's what? Unstable in all. Circle that. His ways. Double-minded. Meaning you, you don't really know what you want. Right? You're saying one thing, but you're speaking something else. He said, stay true to your confession. Stand firm on your confession. What did I say? I said, you are blessed. I said, you are the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. Why are you speaking? Why are you speaking poverty and lack then? Why are you saying you don't have enough when your father owns a thousand cattle on the hill? Come on. No. You are in royalty. You you are you are in the in, you have received an inheritance. You better understand it. We just got to follow these instructions. That's all I'm saying. He is he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Ooh. And this was all talking about profiting from trials. Right? Listen to what this saying, profiting from trials. When a trial comes, you don't think the you don't think the profit but it's telling you how to profit in a trial. First of all, we got to count it all joy. Why? Because it's going to produce faith. I mean, it's going to produce patience in us, right? It's going to be a perfect work because God is doing it. Then he said, if you lack wisdom, ask me for it, right? He's willing to give it to us if we just ask and open our mouth. And then when we ask, we better ask it in faith. I Meaning, believe everything I'm telling you to do. Then you better not doubt. Come on, family. It's, it's written right here. It's written right here. It's written. All we got to do is read. Let's go. Now, it says the perspective of rich and poor. Okay. The perspective of rich and poor. Let's go. It says, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Exaltation lowly, poor, right? Let the lowly brother or the poor brother glory in his ex ex exaltation. But the, but let, no, don't say that. It says, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. Mm, mm, mm. Let's read it again. But the rich in his humiliation because as a flower of the field he will pass away i'm not liking the way that's reading family <laughs> okay i just not let me see you know i you know i'm sorry i i got i gotta make it make sense for me so give me a second where are we at what is this james i gotta i, I can't just roll over that uh-uh you know this is the new kjb I still got to um, hear it. I got to read it and make it make sense to me. And my y'all might have got it. I mean, I get it, but I need to really get it. Give me a second. Let me see. <sighs> where we at? I'm sorry. I just got another Bible out. Let me see where this says. What we on? Number nine. Okay, so I'm gonna read it in the Amplified because I just have to, and it's just, just, just when I get stuck, that's what I'm gonna do because I need to get understanding. So number nine, James one and nine. Okay, right here, James one and nine. This is the Amplified. This is my translation. This is the one that makes sense to me. Okay, and what does it say? Let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his high position. As a born again believer called to the true riches and to be an heir of God. Now that was something totally different. You see what I'm saying? That made more sense to me. One more time. Let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his high position. Right? So the one, so the brother that's in low circumstances, glory in his high position. As a born again believer, come on, called to the true riches, called to the what true riches 
and to be an heir of God. Because that's where your wealth is in heaven, right? We want to store up our treasure in heaven. And that's you are an heir. True riches. True riches is where? In heaven. And to be an heir of God. Come on. That's your, that's your, that's the prize to be an heir of God, to be his child. Right? Okay, so that makes sense. I got it. I hope y'all got it too. I needed to do that. So now let's come back and read this one more time. And and now to probably make I might got it, but I just want to read it in the Amplified too so it can just make more sense, at least for me. Okay. It says, and the rich man to his glory and being humble by trials revealing human far fairly. What is this frailty? Knowing true riches are found in the grace of God. What? Knowing true riches. What I said, our reward is in heaven. Knowing true riches are found in the grace of God. For like the flowers of the grass, he will pass away. Because he is focused, this rich man who's physically rich, right? He got money in the bank. He got houses, cars, everything he need, right? He has all of that stuff, but it don't mean nothing. The Bible said it's going to be like a flower of grass and it will all pass away. But the one who is humble, the one who knows his position in Christ is the really the, the true riches. He's the one who's really rich because he has Jesus and Jesus has what everything he owns it all. So that's where your real wealth is. That's basically what this scripture is saying. That's what I got out from reading from the Amplified because that KJV. Baby, no. <laughs> okay. So that's basically what it's saying. The man that's really rich, all his stuff going to pass away like a flower. It's going to wither away. But your true riches, the true wealth is in Jesus Christ, right? In your inheritance with him, with God. All right. That's basically what this saying. It says, and his beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Meaning he chasing after the stuff. But the true believer chases after God's face, right? Not his hand. We're not, we not serving the Lord for the blessings. We serving him for a relationship, right? So that's what that's basically talking about. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's come on. We ain't got too much more to go. Woo, I love it. I love it. Hopefully that made sense. Hope you, hopefully you got it. Let's go. Now it's talking about loving God under trials. Listen, ooh, this is going to be good. Loving God under trials, meaning when you're going through, is God still your number one or did you put him down? Okay, let's go. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Listen, number one, this is telling us. Let me let me get a let me get a highlighter. Let me highlight first. Let me highlight first. Bless number one is who the man who endures what temptation. So that means you're gonna have to endure temptation. By you enduring temptation, you will be blessed. That's what I'm reading. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved. He will receive the crown of life. Come on. Mm. Which the Lord has promised 
to those who what? Love him. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's read it again. Blessed, uh-huh, is the man who what? Endures temptation. So when the enemy come in and make you want to do wrong, because you always have a choice. God going to give you free will. The enemy has the right to be there to tempt you. He's never going to go anywhere. But you have to make a conscious decision and choose righteousness, which is to do it right, to do it God's way. That's all righteousness is. I'm going to do it God's way. Blessed, okay, again, is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, for when he has been approved, he will what? He will what? Receive the crown of life. Come on. Which the Lord has promised. To who? To those, a specific people. To who? To those. Who is these people? The ones who love him. The ones who love God. The ones who love Jesus. Will what? Receive the crown of life. Come on, family. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get an understanding. In all our getting, let's get an understanding. We will be blessed if we endure temptation, right? Excuse me. For when he has been approved, glory be to God, from what? Passing the test, passing the trial without that murmuring and complaining, fussing and cussing. When you pass the test, when you endure, all right, you have been, you will be approved. He will receive the crown of life. Come on, family, which the Lord has promised to who? A specific group of people. Who is he talking about? To those who love him. Those who love him does what? Follow his commands. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. That's how you, we know if you love God, if you keep in his commandments. Because the John 14, 15 tells us clearly, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So those who keep his commandments are those who love him. Period. You can't argue that you ain't keeping the commandments. We might, we might can say you don't love Jesus because you're not keeping his commandments. He said to show me you love me. Keep my commandments. That's it. Keep my commandments. Amen. Let's go. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Listen, let me get another color. Mm, mm, mm. Are you loving it? Okay. You learning something? All right. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Those words not becoming, well, God, God made me do it. No. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Listen, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Listen right here. Tell the truth and shame the devil. I don't know why it's so light. Okay. Need that to show up. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. All right. That's where they begin. The devil made me do it. No, you made a conscious choice. You still could have had it. You could have still said no. You could have still turned away from it. But you chose. All the devil can do is bring you to it. But you're going to have to put your hand to it. Right? You're going to have to touch it. The devil can't really make you do nothing. You're choosing it. Because you can choose to turn away and say no. Listen. One more time. Let no one say when he is tempted. I am tempted by God. For God cannot. God cannot be tempted by evil. Okay? Okay? Nor does he himself tempt anyone. Scripture. Scripture. Let's go. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away whoo, by his own desires and enticed. Listen. So he turned it back on you. He just turned it back on you. He said, it ain't me that's tempting you. I can't be tempted by evil and I'm not going to tempt anyone. But listen, listen, but each one is tempted when he, meaning you, 
is drawn away, come on, by his own desires. You're drawn away because you like that sin. You like smoking. You like fornicating. You like stealing. You like lying. You're drawn away. You know it's wrong, but you like the sin so much, you drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Not, they ain't got nothing, it didn't even say the devil. It said you. So you can't even blame the devil. The devil made me do it. Nope, you chose. It's your own desire. You like the sin. You love it. Scripture, I'm like, come on, y'all reading it? Ooh, I love it. Talk to us today, Holy Spirit. Talk to us through this word. Talk to us. Teach us today. One more time. We know what? What did we learn just now? God can't be tempted by evil and he's not going to tempt anyone, right? It says, but each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn away by his own desires, his own desires and enticed. It's us, not the devil, us by our own desires is what I'm reading. Then it says, then when desire has conceived, whew, it gives birth to sin. Whew, once you put your hand to it, because you can be enticed. Being tempted is not a sin. You can be tempted all day. You can be tempted to want to have, to fornicate, to do drugs, to drink, to fuss, to cuss, to do all that thing. You can be tempted. But until you do it or put your hands to it, you are not sinning. Is when you start doing it, when you put it into action, now you have sinned. Listen, read this. It says, then, come on, how, come on, Holy Spirit, you better teach this. Then, when desire have conceived, once it got planted, right? Conception, once it is conceived, once it got implanted in you, when desire has conceived, what is it? Your desire. When that, when that's, when that, flesh rise up and say i want my way it has been conceived it gives birth to sin mm, 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 listen and sin when it is fully grown when it is full grown brings forth death i'm just gonna let that sit right there <laughs> Woo! i'm gonna let that sit right there this, mm, 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 mm. I know y'all, I, mm, I love this. Teach me today. We gonna highlight all that. Okay. Let's read it. Let's read it again. Just in case you didn't, just in case it didn't click. We're going to slow down. We're going to read it slow. Let's start from 14 so it can flow. Bars. Okay. We're going to read it slow so it can flow. That's a bar. Here we go. What is a bar? Something that rhymed. Okay. For those of you who are new, when I say bars, it just means I said something that rhymed. Okay. It says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Mm -hmm. Then when desire has conceived, meaning gotcha, right? It gives birth to sin because now you acted upon that temptation. And guess what? And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. And what is death? Separation from God. That's all. Separation from God. It's going to bring forth death. Meaning once you sin, you separate yourself from God. That's why you. it's crucial to repent, to realign yourself back in God's good graces. To be reconciled with him. Thank, ain't you glad Jesus died so you can just repent and ask for forgiveness and get right back in line? Woo! You better thank him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Jesus. That's just... Mm -mm. Okay, let's go. Listen, listen. Is this our scripture? Wait, let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm just too caught up. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay, here we go. Listen. Do not be deceived. Mm, mm, mm. My beloved brethren. Listen. Right there. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. Do not be deceived. My beloved brethren. Sistering. Every good gift and every perfect gift 
is from above and comes down from the father of lights. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. You know, in Ephesians, it tells us that God has already blessed us with spiritual gifts before the foundation of the world. Spiritual mean you can't see it yet, right? They're stored up in heaven. And this is just saying every good gift and every perfect gift, and a gift can be a blessing, is from above. You got to learn how to tap in to bring it down to you by doing what? Keeping his commandments, being obedient. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above in heaven, right? And comes down, comes down, right? Here to the earthly realm. It comes from the spiritual realm into the earthly realm, right? Because it's above in the heavenly realm. And then what? Comes down to the earthly realm from who? The From the father of lights. You better read this word. You better read this word. And it says, with whom there is no variation of shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. Mm, mm, mm. Wait, let me, let me, let me slow down. Let me slow down. <sighs> Help me, Lord. Okay, one more. He said, do it one more time. I'm doing it one more time. Do not be deceived, family. All right? Do not be deceived, my brother and sisters. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. I want to know what this say in the Amplified. Shadow of turning. I know, I know, but just let me do me, okay? Let me do me. Let me do me. Come on, James. Why did I close it? I don't even know why I closed this. Because I know I was going to have to refer to my girl because that's just it's my girl. What scripture? We own 16 and 17. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know. Forgive me. Okay. Um. Okay. Here we go. I know. We just, just, just listen. <laughs> okay. Just listen. Here we go. This is the Amplified now. Do not be misled. The New King James said deceived, right? Do not be misled, my beloved brothers and sisters. Okay? So we do not want to be misled or deceived. And then what does it say? It says every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights. What does that mean, Amplified? The Creator and sustainer of the heavens. Come on, you better break it down. In whom there is no variation. What does that mean? No rising or setting mm. or shadow cast by his turning. What does that mean, Amplified? For he is perfect and never changes. You see why I do the Amplified? You see how that just broke that down? Come on, you better quit. I told you to get Amplified. I told you. Okay, now. Now it makes sense. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, it says, Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. Okay, since we got understanding of that. And it says, That we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, somebody. Quit playing. Let me see. I'm just looking at something. What was that? Was that 18? Okay, see, this is... I'm sorry. I got to read it and amplify it again for y'all because... 
<laughs> I want y'all to understand. I know. I just, I, I don't like not being clear. All right. So we're going to read 18 too. It said, it was of his own will that he gave us birth. Wait a minute. Is this the right one? Wait, let me make sure. Um. Oh yeah, because it says it was his own will. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the right one. It was of his own will that he gave us birth. What? What that mean? As his children by the word of truth. Come on. So that we would be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. What does that mean? Amplified a prime example of what he created to be set apart to himself, sanctified, made holy for his divine purpose. Now, do you understand why I keep telling y'all to get y'all amplified? Do you understand? One more time. It was of his own will that he gave us birth as his children by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. What does that mean? A prime example of what he created, uh-huh, to be what? Set apart to himself. He created us to be set apart for himself, right? To be sanctified, uh-huh, made holy. Come on, somebody, for his divine purpose. That's why you don't live for yourself. You now live for his divine purpose. We are to be holy. We are to be set apart. We are to be sanctified. Okay, I didn't get all that from the New King James. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get that. That's why I got to make it make sense. Okay? Now, I didn't get that. All I got was this. That we might be kind of fruit of his creatures. That didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It didn't do nothing for me. Okay? It didn't. It just, it just didn't. It might have did something for you. But the Amplified is what speaks to me. That's why I love it so much. So let's go. Number 19. I know y'all like, just get to the lesson. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get some understanding. Okay, here we go. Qualities needed in trials. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, qualities needed in trial. So now we got to really pay attention because these, this is some qualities that we're going to need going through our trials. Pay attention to these topics because it's going to tell you what you need, right? Qualities needed in trials. Let's find out what they are. Let's go. And of course, I'm probably going to go to the Amplified. I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> Here we go. So then my beloved brothers, brethren or brothers and sisters, right? Let every man be swift. This is our scripture. I think this is our scripture. Um, yep, 19 through 22. This is our foundational text right here. So then, my brethren, our brothers and sisters, let every man be swift to hear, uh-huh, slow to speak, uh-huh, slow to wrath. These are qualities that we're going to need to get through our trials. You better write them down. Write them down underline them highlight them do what you need to do okay so then these are the qualities family that we're going to need for your trials what we're going to need to be swift to hear meaning quick right quick to hear shut your mouth rokisha shut your mouth and be listen be swift to hear uh-huh and what slow to speak and slow to wrath or slow to anger. That's a, those are the three qualities we're going to need when a trial comes up against us. Right? Listen. Stop talking. And don't get angry because it's happening to you. Right? We should be doing what? Counting it all joy anyway, right? We should be doing what? Counting it all joy anyway. Right? Okay. 20. For the wrath of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. Listen. So your anger being mad at the situation does not produce the righteousness of God. That's what I'm reading. Y'all bet y'all can't tell me this ain't good. I'm just saying. Mm, mm, mm. One more time. Again, we focusing on the qualities that we need when we're going through a trial. Okay. 
is telling us, so then my brothers and sisters or my brethren, let every man, who? Every man, let who? Every man, okay? Be swift to hear or quick to hear, uh-huh. Slow to speak. And slow to wrath or anger, uh-huh. For the wrath of a man or the anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. There it is right there. Boom. Got it? So it's three things we need to do when we come into a trial. Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Don't get mad at the situation. Don't start running off at the mouth. Just shh. What are you swift to hear from God? Wisdom that you need to be asking for. Remember it told us if you, those of you who need wisdom, ask. So now the, here come a trial. Don't get the mouthing off and mad and oh, oh, I take my money. And, uh, no, 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 no. Now, okay, it hit you. Now what you do? Telling you right here, what do you do? Shh, get asked for wisdom right now. Lord, give me wisdom in this situation, Father. I'm about to count this all joy because I know you about to come through. I need wisdom on this situation. I'm not about to get upset. I'm not about to fuss. I'm not about to cuss. I'm not about to get angry. Nope, I'm about to ask for wisdom in this situation. And then I'm going to be slow to speak. I'm not about to cuss nobody out. Nope. Because they stole this or they took that. No, I'm not. I'm not about to be angry. I'm about to do what? Count it all joy. Why? Woo! For the wrath of man does not produce, glory be to God, the righteousness of God. You better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. <sighs> Glory be to God. Now, this is our second part. This is still our this is still our foundational text. All this, all the way to 22. So all this right here is foundational text. Okay? All that right there is our foundational text. Hopefully you can see that. From 19 to 22. So let's go in here and read the next part. This is important. I pray this every day doers not hearers only you have to do what the word of god says do <sighs> you have to if you want it to work for you you better do what it say do Ooh, bars okay <laughs> here we go therefore who jesus i'm feeling the holy spirit therefore lay aside all filthiness this is what we got to do, right? Doer. We got to do this, okay? Doer. Listen to what we got to do. Listen to what you got to do. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness. It's the first thing we got to do, right? Got to be a doer. What's the first thing we got to do? Lay aside all filthiness an overflow of wickedness. So we got to get that wickedness out of us and that filthiness out of us. That's what we got to do. We got to lay it aside. Okay. And then it says, what, what do we got to do next? And receive. Uh-huh. So now we got to receive something. What do we got to receive? The meekness or humbleness. Woo. The implanted word. Mm which is able to save your souls. Come on, somebody. Come on, we just gonna highlight it all. Why not? Why not? Let's read it again. This is something we have to do. What do we need to do, Lord? Lay aside our filthiness. Mm -hmm. Lay aside our overflowing of wickedness. Uh-huh. And then what? Receive with meekness with humbleness then we got to receive excuse me with meekness or humbleness the implanted it's in, it's in us it's already in us it says implanted word come on it's already in us the word is already implanted in us but we got to do what receive it humbly are you reading this you're going to have to receive the implanted word that's already in you humbly, 
right? Lay aside that filthiness, lay aside that wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, glory be to God, which is what? Able to save your soul. Woo, this is, this is fire. Listen, okay, boom. Now this is the last part of our foundational text, 22. But be doers of the word, comma. Let's just sit right there for a second. But be doers, put this in the comments, family. Put this in the comments, okay? This is the third one. But be doers of the word. This is what God needs us to do. He don't want us just to hear this word. Like you hearing it right now, but he needs you to apply it, right? He gonna need you to do this part. He gonna need you to lay aside that filthiness and that overflowing wickedness, right? He gonna need you to be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That's what you gonna have to do. Don't just hear this word. You gonna have to follow it. Do the word, okay? Listen, it's telling you. Be, I mean, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Why? Why, God? Deceiving yourself. <sighs> Listen, he's saying that you, by you just hearing the word and not being a doer, you deceiving yourself because you think you in right standing with God. Oh, I know the word. You quoting scriptures like, Ain't nobody business, but you ain't doing none of it. So guess what you're doing? You're deceiving yourself. Let that sink in. I'm just saying, let that sink in. I'm just the messenger. We just reading the word. Don't get mad. Let's just, let's just read. Okay. I hope you're learning something. I hope it's sinking in because everybody can't receive my, my way of teaching. Um, we just reading. <laughs> okay. Listen, oof, Jesus, but be doers of the word crystal clear and not hearers only. Why, Lord? Because you're going to be deceiving yourself. I'm quiet on purpose, okay? You know I can talk. Deceiving yourselves. If you just a hearer only and not a doer. Let me just highlight all this. All this, all this need to be highlighted. I mean, underlined. <sighs> I'm just letting it sink in. Let it sink in, family. Read it. Read it over. Re keep reading it and keep reading it and keep reading it until it get in your heart. Right? Until you understand, I got to be a doer of this word. Yeah, I am just a hearer. I hear. I know what to do. I just don't do it. I know I need to pray, but I'm just not praying. I know I need to study, but I'm just not studying. Mm. Okay, well, get to doing then. <laughs> get to doing. Here we go. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, listen, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, right? You understand that? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing him, him observing his natural face in a mirror. So we're saying you're looking in the mirror and you're just looking at yourself. Okay, you're looking at yourself. You're looking. Okay, you're looking in the mirror at your natural self, right? Okay, you got that vision. Now let's keep reading. For he observes himself. Uh-huh. You look, you see your hair ain't combed. You see your, your teeth ain't brushed. Your hair is all over the, your face. You got coal in your eye. Okay, you see yourself. You've seen your natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself. Uh-huh. Then it says, goes away. And immediately forgets what kind of man he was. You forgot you. You, you, you looked at yourself in the mirror. Right? And then you walk away and you forgot. And then you open the door. You go out, you run outside real quick to check your mail. You forgot your hair all over your head. <laughs> you forgot you didn't brush your hair. 
You were out there looking a hot mess. Right? I'm just saying. Listen. Let's read it. For he observes himself. Because you looked in the mirror. But then you go away. And immediately. Forget what kind of man he was. And that's how God's word is. You hear the word. You read the word. Right? Okay? You doing all that. But then you walk away from it because you didn't do it. You're going to forget it immediately. It's going to be snatched out of your heart because you didn't apply it. And therefore, you can't be transformed by what? The word of God. Why you can't be transformed? Because you're not applying it. You got to apply this word for it to transform you, for it to get all up in your heart, for the Holy Spirit to do a work in you. Right? We have to do this word. Come on. We got to live this word. For he observes himself, glory be to God, goes away. Okay, you read the word. Now you close the Bible and immediately forget what kind of man he was. Let's keep reading. But he, listen, who looks into the perfect law, glory be to God, of liberty and continues in it mm, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Listen, this one, who? This one will be blessed in what he does. That is some motivation to be a doer of the word. It's telling you right here. I'm not making this up. If you begin to do the word of God, glory be to God, you will be blessed. That's what I'm reading. Okay, maybe, 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 I don't know. What y'all Bible say? Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Glory, teach this thing, Holy Spirit. But he, glory be to God, who looks into the perfect law of liberty, or you can say freedom. Come on, because God's law is freedom. But he who looks into the perfect law, meaning doing it God's way, of liberty, the law of liberty, the law of freedom, right? <sighs> But he who looks into the perfect law, meaning God's way of doing things, which is freedom, is liberty in God's way, right? And what? And continue in it, meaning you continue to follow it. You continue to obey it, okay? And it's not a forgetful hearer. I mean, you're not forgetting the Ten Commandments. You're not forgetting to not steal. You're not forgetting to not lie. You're not forgetting to not fornicate. You're not forgetting to not um, to do good to your brethren, right? to love each other, to build each other up. You're not forgetting that. You are what? Continuing in it. You're living it. You're doing it. Right? It says, and it's not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Right? Come on. Look, I'm going to underline this word work. Yes, it's work. We're not saved by our works, but we have to do some work. Faith without work is dead family you're gonna have to do something right that's the whole thing to be a doer not a hearer when you do something you're putting in work i don't care what they say you are working unto the lord okay whatever here we go one more time but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty mm, and continues in it meaning doing what God tell you to do, following his laws, and it's not forgetful that, and it's not a forgetful hearer. I mean, you heard the law, but you ain't obeying it. You ain't, you just heard it. Okay, I heard that before, right? And it's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work of the work, doer of the work. Let's emphasize that. Who? This one. Woo, who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about? This one, the one who does the work, the one who continues to follow the perfect law of liberty. This one will be blessed in what he does. Glory be to God. You better read this word and understand it. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Y'all, do y'all get, I don't know. Do y'all get excited about the word like I do? I don't, I don't know. I don't hear you. 
I don't hear you over there shouting. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just need to highlight this and make it more bright. That was a dull yellow. I want this to pop. You understand me? Come on. Woo! Okay. <laughs> oh, I love this. How could you not get excited when you come to the Word of God? Listen to, look at all this knowledge we getting. <sighs> okay, well, how many minutes? We had an hour. Okay, come on, girl. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm taking my time. Here we go. This is the last part anyway. If anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, Lord have mercy, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Listen to what this is saying. If anyone among you, mm-hmm, thinks he thinks wait a minute if any minute if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue meaning be slow to speak bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart you deceiving your own heart because you're talking too much you believe in what you're talking but you ain't walking in right but deceives his own heart. This one's religion is useless. Mm, mm, mm. And, and, and following Christ is not a religion. It's a relationship. Let's be clear there. Okay. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. Put that in the comments. God's relationship. I mean, God. It's not a, I mean, how do I want to say it? Our walk is not religious. It's a relationship. Put that in the comments. Our walk is not religious. It is a relationship. All right, family. And if you can put it a better way, you can. But I'm just saying. No, let me use, let me use the cover. Let me, okay, let's go back to purple. Let me just highlight this up. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, right? Be slow to speak, but deceives his own heart. This one's religion, meaning the one who's talking all this mess is useless. Okay. Number 27, pure an undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. Uh oh, he's about to tell us. Let's listen. Pay it. Get your ears up. <laughs> get your ears up. Listen. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. Colon. So it's about to tell us what pure and undefiled religion before God is. Is this. What is it? Listen, listen to what it is to visit orphans. Y'all better, y'all better. I hope you're learning something. I hope you're learning something. Listen to what he's saying. He's telling you, he's telling us right here that pure and undefiled, pure. If you want pure and undefiled religion before God, the father, this is what you need to do. Listen. To visit the orphans and widows when in their trouble, when in their trouble and what else, Lord, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Don't follow what the worldly people doing. Now that right there, if you visit the orphans and the widows in their time of trouble and keep yourself from being defiled or unspotted from this world, that will be considered pure, undefiled religion before God. That's what I'm reading. What y'all reading? What is y'all reading? Mm, mm, mm. I thank you, Father, for the reading of the word. I thank you, Lord, for the reading of the word, not just reading, but the knowledge, clarity, understanding, and revelation.
Come on, Father. Woo! Okay, we're going to read this last 26 and 27 together, and then we're going to, this is it. If anyone among you think thinks he is religious, uh-huh, you think you're religious, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless, okay? Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. Clear, he's clear. He says, what is it? To visit orphans and widows in their trouble. Uh-huh. And to keep oneself unspotted, to keep you unspotted, to keep you undefiled from the world. Come out from among them. Right? And that will conclude the reading of the word. Glory be to God. So let's get to these notes, family. That was good. Come on. Can I get a praise? Hallelujah. Not me. I don't want the praise. Give the praise to the Lord. Okay. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. All right. Woo, let's give God a praise. Glory be to God. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for using me today. Use me today. Use me up. All right. Here we go. You can't rush it. Now let's read. Let's read this. God is more interested in us being someone than getting somewhere. Woo! That's, let me, let me read that again for the people in the back. God is more interested in us being someone than getting somewhere. So he, mm, 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 that's, that's a word. <laughs> that's a word. God is more interested in us being someone than getting somewhere. Glory. Instead of measuring our worth by what we achieve and acquire, the Lord wants to see us develop virtues such as peace, truth, and integrity. Let that sink in. He intends for us to what? Endure trials, according to 1 John 4. Trust him to meet our needs. Uh-huh. Freely ask for his help. Y'all need to screenshot this. Discern between good and bad to make wise decisions. Give generously to others just as he gives generously to us. Listen well and respond thoughtfully. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again because somebody needs to hear this one. Listen well and respond thoughtfully. Uh huh. Act instead of merely talking about doing good. Mm, 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 mm. Show compassion to every person. It says continue on next page. Did y'all screenshot that? Take them notes. Put that in your journal and Bible if you got one. Okay? Take a note. All right. Here we go. We're going to continue on. This is good. This is apply the word Bible. Don't you love it? Okay. This is still part of James. But this is talking about the roots of sin. We're reading it because it's still part of James 1, okay? It says, some people blame God for their sin as if he puts them in situations more, tempta more tempting than they can handle. But sin never starts outside of us. Woo! Listen to that. Sin, but sin never starts outside of us. It always begins within. Often because we want something God has not given us. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to read it again. Yep. Some people blame God for their sin. As if he puts them in situations more tempting than they can handle. But sin never starts outside of us. It always begins within. 
often because we want something God has not given us. And you can go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 6 and James 4 verses 1 through 3. Come on. Sin comes from our own covetedness or discontent. Mm. A feeling that we deserve more than we have. Let that sink in. Who is this talking to today? Lord, you better give us an uppercut to the throat. <laughs> okay. Sin comes from our own covetedness. Always wanting what somebody else got. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Right? Or be discontent with what you already been blessed with. You can't even thank God for what you got. You so worried about what they got over there. You ain't even thanking God for what you got. Because you want more. Woo. Okay. Sin. I'm going to read it again. Sin comes from our own covetedness. Meaning we want what other people got. Or discontent. A feeling that we deserve more than we have. Mm, ungrateful, just ungrateful. And you wonder why he ain't continue to bless you. You ain't even appreciating what you got. He said, until you appreciate what you already got, why would I give you more? Mm, here we go. This close tie between sin and pride should alert us to the fact that God resists the proud, woo, but gives grace, glory be to God, to the humble. Mm, mm, mm. You over there stuck up. I deserve more than this. This all I got? This all you giving me, God? This all I get? You better be thankful you got that. He said, God, resist the proud. You all prideful? Like this it? Instead of being thankful, you prideful. Mm, mm, mm. I'm just saying. <sighs> Help me, Jesus. This close tie between sin and pride should alert us. It should alert us, family, to the fact that God resists the proud and the arrogant, right? But gives what? Grace to the humble. It says, the surest path to overcoming temptation is to develop humility, meaning humble yourself brothers and sisters humble yourself bring it down three four notches okay bring it down three humble yourself you ain't all that in a bag of chips no humble yourself and God said you do it because if he do it you don't want that he said you humble yourself because when I if I hung gotta humble you whoo it's gonna be for everybody listen the sure path to overcoming temptation look this is some application family the sure path to overcoming temptation if you want to overcome temptation guess what is to develop humility be humble right a character trait that leads to contentment mm. then it says see humility the scandalous virtue my Lord, my God. Do we want to go read that? Do we want to read that? What time is it? Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's go. Let's go. Let's just follow the notes. See humility, the scandalous virtue. Let's go to, well, you ain't got to go, but I got to go to Philippians 2 and 3 so we can read this. So we just going to follow the note, okay? Because it's all part of it. Um, Phil what is this? Philippians two and three. Philippians is, I guess, back this way. Oh no, this way. Uh, wait, Philippians. I know we gotta read that. Philippians, where you at? Where you at? Let me see. <sighs> Give me a second. This don't got no tabs. Mm. Nope. Nope. It's a 
around here. It's, it's up in here somewhere. Give me a second. Let me let me get through these little. Give me a second, y'all. Got no tabs. You see? There it is. There it go. There it go. Okay. What did you say? Philippians two and three. Okay. Let's let's look for that little uh thing. Okay. Here here go the note right here. I don't want to lose my place. Okay, let me just put a sticky. Let me just put a sticky right here. Okay, so let's read this because this was we just following the notes. This is how you use this. This is how you use this Bible. Just in case you don't have it and might want to get it. Humility, the scandalous virtue, right? It says when Paul praised lowliness of mind, he invites scorn. Like modern society, Greek and Roman culture exalted the rich and powerful, not the humble. Lowly, lowliness of mind would have seemed to pos, what is this preposterous contradiction lowly people or humble people such as slaves had no intelligence only the wealthy upper classes possessed education and were worthy of honor mm, okay let's keep reading can y'all see Okay. Humility seems especially out of place in Philippi. How to a Rome home to a Roman military colony with the pretentious name of Colonia Augusta Julia. Y'all see that. The city lived under the y'all see that. Law of Italy. Law of Italy creating a miniature self-governing version of the Roman Empire. The Philippians would have considered themselves quite important, right? Being boasted up. Yet Paul insisted that his Philippians readers cultivate humility. He did not, I'm sorry, camera. He did not advocate a groveling servile demeanor but that they would see themselves in relationship to god biblically humility means evaluating ourselves accurately nothing more nothing less it includes teachability mm. instead of thinking more highly of ourselves than is warranted and you can find that in romans 12 and 3 then it goes on to say, we should recognize the full range of our strengths and weaknesses, successes and failures, and receive instruction on what to do about each. Okay, we need to know what we should do about our strengths and our weaknesses, our successes and our failures. It says real humility makes us not self depreciating, but truthful, right? You're not deceiving yourself. Jesus praised the poor in spirit, literally the destitute. You can find that in Matthews 5 and 3. And David expresses such people humble attitude. Come on. And you can find that in Psalms 39, 4 through 6. It says, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am indeed. You have made my days as hand breathed mm. and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is just vapor. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. You ain't nothing but a vapor. Let's say continue on the page. So let's read this. Y'all see how this Bible flow? Um, surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they, surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. Mm, mm, mm. You're doing all this work. The prophet Micah says that humility is one of the three essential virtues that should rule our lives. Come on. And you can find that in Micah 6 and 8. 
He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? Okay? But to justly, to love mercy. But to justly, to love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. Right? Totally dependent on him. Right? In faith. Not looking on things that are you just trust in God. Right? You in the driver's seat. I mean, you in the passenger seat. Not God is in the driver's seat. You in the passenger seat. It says humility is essential if we want to live with contentment. Scriptures insist that we either walk humbly with God or not at all. Woo! Listen. And it's a tango scripture to back it up. Go read them. And then it says more. Humility affects three key areas of everyday life. What does humility affect, y'all? Our circumstances, our nature. Okay, then it says, see managing the original sin at Romans 7, 29 and how we see ourselves. We can just keep going with this and keep going with this and keep going with this. So this one is talking about circumstances, um, managing with original sin. That sounds good, don't it? Y'all, <laughs> how much time we got? Do we want to go there? Y'all ready? Because I know I wanted to read this other one too. This is dealing with a humility. Affects the three key areas of our life. Our circumstances, our nature. Then it says managing with original sin. That sounds good. I'm going to read it. Okay. If y'all don't want to read it, I'm going to read it anyway. Let's go to Romans 7 and 21. I want to read it because I'm nosy. I want to know. Right? I know this. We're going to get to the devotion. Just give me one second. This we're going to read. After this, we're going to read one more. Let us let me go to it. Let me go to Romans real quick. Oh, it's this way. Acts. Okay, Romans. It's this way. Oh, man. I mean, this way. I'm sorry. Romans. Okay. What did I say? 7 and 21. Seven. Okay, here it is. Okay, this all these tabs, y'all. I gotta stick a pen somewhere. I can just take this. Oh no, I don't need it. Okay, here we go. Let's read this. I'm sorry. Let's read this. Managing original sin. Because we need to know how to manage it, right? Let's read it. Many people like to believe human beings are basically good. However, while scripture affirms the inherent dignity and worth of every individual, you get all these scriptures, people at work, I mean, individual, it nevertheless asserts that every individual is born in sin, distant from God, naturally tending towards wrong, rather than right right that's in our nature we want to do wrong that's why you got to choose it you have to choose righteousness on purpose be intentional about it our pride would like to do away with the concept of original sin an understandable urge given that pride is the root of sin and the first step in confronting sin requires us to swallow our pride and humbly admit our true condition. Listen. Is y'all in here? Okay. Our true condition. Where am I at? <sighs> I lost my spot. Mm, where was I? Okay, let me just read it. Oh, our true condition. Then we confess our sin to God. And trust solely in his grace for forgiveness and acceptance. Amen. Luke 18, 13. All right. This is some good notes. If you want to continue building a relationship with our Savior, a humble, honest. Wait a minute. If you want to continue building a relationship with our Savior, a humble, a humble, 
honesty about our sin must become our way of life. Sin is so entrenched within us that we can never claim to have conquered it. Mm. We instead live with limitations, admitting that we do not have all the answers to our own problems, let alone those of the world. True humility comes from seeing yourself in relationship with God. See humility, the scandalous virtue. So that's where we just came from. So it's taking us back to that. So let me go back here. Okay. Because we stopped, we, we left off right here, but we still had this to read. So we went to the, we follow this whole humility thing. You see how this study Bible gets? Go. Okay. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. So right here, it says, including the needy and forgotten. Character never develops instantaneously. And God walks with us during the entire process. And then it says here, Paul suggests practical steps to slow down and become Christ-like. And I really wanted to get to that, that one. Why? Because that's the name of our um, topic, slow down, right? So I really wanted to hit this one. So let's go. We need to go to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11. Did I move it? Is that what I tore out? Y'all, I think I can tow that out. Let me, let me, let me, let me turn. Let me get the first Thessalonians. I think it's this way. Did I pass it? Oh, there it is. Boom. First Thessalonians, what? Mm. Oh, that ain't it. Wait, wait a minute. Four and 11. Okay, boom. Quiet living. Here, here go, here go our article right here. After we read this, we're gonna go to the devotion. I promise. Okay, I'm not gonna follow the link because we will be doing this all day, fooling with me. <laughs> all right, here we go. Quiet living. It says Paul is a Paul's exhortation to lead a quiet life seems widely impossible in modern life. How can we ever find calm when technology consistently accelerates change and increases complexity? When we carry the world in our hands and anyone can trace our digital footprints. So true. When a global economy makes everybody's business our own. Come on. They ain't never lied. Our faith makes us able to meet the challenge of leading a quiet life. Let me read that again. Our faith makes us un no, our faith makes us able to meet the challenge of leading a quiet life. So our faith makes it makes it we can do it, right? It says an important first step is Paul's command to work with our own hands. Paul emphasizes Emphasis is not on hands, but on your own. God does not insist on manual labor, but on self-sufficiency. Then it says, see a command to work at second. Th you see how this Bible study just keep you going. See a command at work at this thing right here. Then it says, and Paul was not objecting to busyness, but to needless distraction. Ooh, them phones, that social media is a needless distraction unless you are seeking out content to help you grow in Christ. If you just on there trying to be nosy and see the latest drama and gossip, needless distraction, right? But if you on here trying to learn some word, that's a whole different story. Come on, fam. It says we have to admit that we allow and even invite interruptions. A few investments will help us more than developing ways to set boundaries on intrusions without disconnecting from relationships. In fact, the downtime we gain should create space for more often um, connecting with family and neighbors, as well as for personal reflection 
and for conversation with God. I love it. All right. The main thrust of 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11 is to bring peace into our lives, freeing ourselves from unnecessary disturbances and conflicts. And you can find this in Romans 12, 18, Hebrews 12 and 14. Minding our own business. Let me say that again. Minding our own business and working hard helps us live well with people outside the faith. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 12. We live peaceably by avoiding quarrels or arguments and complaints. Come on. Colossians 3, 13. By refusing to take offense, don't be offended, when others strike at us, Matthew 5, 7 and 12. By not getting entangled in others' business. Come on. Proverbs 6 and 1. And by humbly accepting the circumstances that God sends us for our good, right? Because we was just talking about the trials, count it all joy, ask for wisdom, right? I hope y'all didn't forget the reading, ask for wisdom. It's going to bring about what? It's going to produce patience, right? Okay, y'all better remember the word we just read. Um, Did I finish that out? Yeah, that God sends us for our own good. Then you got Romans 8, 28, um, Philippians 4, 11 and 12. And it says more. John wisely advocates spiritual discipline that will lead to the sort of life that Paul describes in his letters. And we're going to stop right there, family, so we can get to this devotion. All right. So that was a lot. You see how this Bible connect you, connect you, connect you, connect you, connect you. So if you like this. And it helps you ap apply the word of God. Again, this is called the apply the word Bible. If you like how that flowed, you like how that works, then you might want to grab you one of these. Okay. So anyway, this is why I wanted to use a different Bible every time, just so you can see how different Bibles go and work in your study. All right. So now let's come on back to the devotion. Now we finally have the devotion at an hour and 36 minutes. Okay. Well, we made up for a couple of weeks, but we only had an hour devotion. So now we had made up for that time. Okay. So here we go. Let's read the foundational text one more time. And it says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself, yourselves, right? That was James 1, 19 through 20. So we're going to read through this one full time without any commentary. Then we're going to read through it a second time and give some underlinings. It should be pretty short, it looks like. So let's go. Conflict will come into our lives. And when it does, we have the opportunity to honor God by responding as his word says we should. Mm. James word above reflects the views of the other writers we have read this week. He summarized what our response should be when we, when conflict comes. Listen, mm-hmm. The text implies that we should listen to those who are teaching God's word. When we do, we learn truth and can apply it. I can say amen to that. The text also implies that we should listen to others. If we fail to listen, we can't hear what others are saying or what God is trying to say to us. Amen. Think before we speak. Conflicts bring emotions. When we are emotionally engaged, we often say the first thing that comes to our mind. James reminds us to be slow to speak, to think about what we say before we say it. Amen, amen, amen. That's talking straight to me. Avoid anger. 
When we sense we are losing control of our emotions, we should stop, take a deep breath, and reflect on what is happening. Mm. Anger fails to produce, glory be to God, the righteousness of God. Mm, mm, mm. We know what God's word says about dealing with conflict. Now we need to obey. Come on, somebody. I love it. 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 Okay, this was easy. This was quick. You might want to screenshot that too. All right, take some notes, baby. I love it. Okay, we're going to read it with the one more time. Conflict will come into our lives. And when it does, we have the opportunity, family. To honor God. Dog. <laughs> to honor God by responding as his word says we should, right? So when trials come, crisis come, trouble come, temptation come, we need to count it all joy, number one. And we have to realize, oh, this is another opportunity for me to do what God told me to do in, in this crisis or in a situation. What should I do? I need to stop. I need to ask for wisdom. I need to, whatever that is, right? Conflict will come into our lives. And when it does, we have the opportunity whoo, to honor God. We have the opportunity to honor God in time of trial, honor God in time of crisis, honor God, right? In times of trial. It says by responding. Let me, I need to underline these. We have the opportunity to honor God by what responding to as his word says we should. James' word above reflect the views of other writers we have read this week. He summarized what our response should be when conflict comes, right? What our response should be, should be when conflict comes. We should what? The, here go the things we should do. Remember I said there's something we have to do. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. You have to put this word to work so that you can start seeing yourself being more like Christ. He's given us the tools. We just have to apply it. All right. First thing we need to do is listen. Linda, listen. Right? First thing we need to do is listen. Straight up. Okay? The text implies that we should listen to those who are teaching God's word. All right. That would be me. But we just reading the word. Okay. When we do, we learn truth. Hallelujah. And can apply it. Is that not true? Is that not true with FFT ministry? Okay. I'm just saying. And text also implies that we should listen to others. If we fail to listen, we can't hear. What others are saying or what God is trying to say to us because we're too busy talking. We're too busy talking and running our mouth. That's why you got to have an ear to hear. That's why I ask the Lord to open our ears so that we may hear. Open our eyes so that we may see. I say that in every single prayer if you notice. Not just to be saying it because he said, if you want something, ask. Just like he said, if you want wisdom, ask for it. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. I'm asking. I don't know what you over there doing, but I'm asking. Next thing we need to do is think before we speak. And we teaching on the tongue right now. We got a tongue study going on. If you new here, go ahead and check out lessons one, two, and three. The tongue study. Okay. It's a playlist for you. Get on it. It's good. I'm telling you, it's good. Here we go. If you have a problem with your mouth, get on that study. It's good. Anyway, I digress. Conflicts bring emotion. Mm -hmm. Conflicts is going to get you riled up, right? You're going to get to rolling your neck, clapping your hands, spitting, talking all hard. <laughs> oh, my bad. That's just me. 
That's just me. Okay, I'm talking about me. Conflict brings emotion, okay? When we are emotionally engaged, we often say the first thing that comes out of our, that comes to our mind. And that's usually something hurtful, if you're being honest. If you angry and you all in your emotions, you ain't trying to lift up and build up. You trying to tear down. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That's just me. Maybe that's just me, fam. Maybe that's just me. Okay. I'm, I'm, ta- I'm telling on myself. I don't know what y'all doing. I'm just, I only can speak for me. First thing that comes out of your, comes to your mind. And it's usually something, not a God. In my case, it's not a God. It's not, it's not edifying at all. That's why I need the tongue study. Okay. James reminds us to be slow to speak. Rokisha, you need to apply this girl, right? You heard it. Now you need to apply it. I'm sorry. I'm talking to myself. Okay. To think about what we say before we say it. Jesus, this is hitting me right in the chest. All right. I need this. I don't know about y'all, but I need this. I need this. This is an on time word for me today. Thank you, Father, for this. I I thank you, Lord. Slow to speak, girl. Think about what we say before we say it. (sighs) This is this lesson is for me. (laughs) Okay. I ain't shame. I need help. I need help in this area, y'all. Pray for your girl. Pray for me. Okay, here we go. All right. When we sense we are losing control of our emotions, key word here, when you feel your spirit, that that spirit of anger rising up in you, because that's what it is. It's a spirit. You can feel it coming on. You'd be like, oh, what? If they say one more, you see, that's the spirit coming up in you. You better, you better, you feel, look, when you sense that spirit of anger, of um, whatever that's, it's a spirit. When you sense you are losing control Right. That means you about to step into you stepping out of the flesh. You stepping into the flesh because now to stay in the spirit, it says to have what self-control. Self-control is the fruit of the spirit. We want to operate in self-control. Jesus, glory to be to God. Teach us today. When you feel that spirit rising up in you, you about to go off. You better just you better you better (laughs) get some self-control. Right. Don't you open your mouth, start cursing people. Don't you, I'm talking to myself now. I ain't talking to you, I'm talking to me, Rokisha. Don't you start cussing. Don't you start fussing. You take a deep breath like this thing telling you to do, right? I'm taking, I'm taking note. I don't know about y'all. When you, when we sense we are losing control, right? That's the sense letting you know you about to step into the flesh. That is not going to be pleasing to God. That is not God-like right there, Rokisha. That is not. That is unacceptable, right? When we sense we are losing control of our emotions, mm, 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 just talking to me, we should what? Stop. I'm about to say circle that if you got the book. We should stop. As soon as you feel it right, is he, who we talking to? Who she talking? Stop. Just stop. I don't care if they think you crazy. You trying to stay in the good graces of the Lord and not sin, right? You should what? Stop. Put that in the comments. Just put stop. Put the stop sign in the comments. Put the stop sign in the comments. Put the stop sign emoji. Or you can just put the word stop if you you don't know how to find the stop sign, okay? Put the word stop, all right? Take a deep breath. Listen. And reflect on what is happening. Like, what is going on? What is going on? This is so good. Okay, this is for me. This is so good, family, because I love the application. When you sense that thing rising up, you better shut that spirit down. You better take a deep breath and reflect on what's happening. And for me, when, I, when I'm when i looking at that, reflect on what's happening. It's like, what spirit is op- in operation here? Okay, it could be using your child, it could be using your husband, it could be using your boss. So you about to get angry, you about to take offense, you better stop. You better take a deep breath and reflect on what is happening. Are they accusing me of something? Are they um, 
belittling me? Are they are they provoking me? You need to find out. You need to reflect on what's happening. Reflect on what's happening. What spirit is operation here? The spirit of strife, the spirit of division, the spirit of um um uh anything you know what i'm saying that's bringing up this stuff reflect on what's happening what spirit is in operation in that moment right it'd be like oh the spirit of division they want they want to divide the spirit of um anger is here the spirit okay so you have to recognize stop reflect on what's happening discern what spirit is in operation and then you better go in in your prayer way you know you better go in praying coming against and binding that spirit that spirit i bind that spirit of jealousy right now I bind that spirit of strife right now I bind that spirit of disunity right now i bind that you get the binding locking it up right we don't engage we don't go tit for tat with the flesh the bible tells us clearly we don't fight against flesh and blood you don't want to fight against the flesh you don't want to fight against that brother sister husband wife child kid boss no, what spirit, we need to reflect on what's happening, what spirit is operating in them and you come against that. Not the person, but the spirit that that person has allowed them to be used, right? Be like, don't let the devil use you. That's what you be hearing sometimes. You be like, ooh, don't let the, don't let the devil use you today, right? Okay, I'm, I know I'm teaching good. So it says, reflect on what is happening. And it says, anger fails to produce righteousness <sighs> that's so good because if we get angry my lord i just thank you father i thank you for this word today i needed this i needed this anger fails to produce the righteousness of god we want to always please god we want to do what's pleasing to god we can't say i i can't control myself then you need to work on it you need to work on it and I'm talking to me, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm talking to myself. When I go back and watch this, this is for me. Okay, anger fails to produce the righteousness of God. So you better be careful, Rokisha. Be slow to anger. Be Avoid it, if all possible. Avoid it, right? These is to do. To do. These right here, right? To do. This is what I need to do. Listen Think before I speak and avoid anger. To do, to be a doer. Okay? We know what God's word says, uh-huh, about dealing with conflict. Mm, mm, mm. Guess what? Now, family, we need to obey. Ain't that a beautiful closing? <laughs> it don't get no better than that. Now, I'm going to just highlight all of it. We know what we should do when it comes to dealing with conflict. Now, we just need to obey. Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. That was good. 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 That was good, family. Woo! Hallelujah. Can I get a shout in the amen? We just found out what we need to do. Right here. Listen. Think before we speak and avoid anger. Now, guess what? Now. We need to obey. Come on. You can't tell me this wasn't a good lesson. Hey, Amen. All right. Now, here go our last little prayer today. Lord, I want to always be a doer of your word. Put that in the comments. That's the last comment of the day. That's the last comment of the day, family. Lord, I want to always be a doer of your word why why we want to do that to be blessed that's what the word said not me the word said if you be a doer of his word you will be blessed remember i hope y'all didn't forget the lesson already jesus why god is faithful Woo! Amen. That's it. I'm out. I'm done. I kept y'all for one hour, 53 minutes. We made up for last week and the week before that with those little um, flimsy hour of devotions. We're back. 
<laughs> I'm so I'm so excited, you guys. I love you guys so 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 much. If you stayed to the end, put um some flames in the comments, okay? Just some fire flames, fire, 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 fire. If you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this um devotion, leave a comment for your girl. It helps grow the channel. Um, and help support the channel. I don't ask for no money. I do this because I love it. It's my assignment, but that helps the channel. Okay. It helps get the channel shared. It helps, um, grow the channel. So just like it. Even if you don't comment, at least like it. Okay. At least like it. All right. So I appreciate you all. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Big hugs to you all. Have a blessed rest of your week. Um, pray for me as I pray for you and I will talk to you all next week if God spares life. Shalom.